Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ has apportioned it. This is why it says, so here's Psalm 68. When he ascended on high, that's the nobleman who went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom. Okay. This, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. Well, I'm going to explain that in a minute. Verse 9. What does he ascended mean? Except he also descended to the lower, there it is, earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. There's a lot in that. When it says he took captivity captive, or he took many captives, um, what it means is he captured captives. So what that's referring to is when Jesus was in the tomb, his human spirit separated, he went to Tartarus, the belly of hell, and he captured them. And he said, you are finished. You are defeated. It, the implication there is a military capture of enemies. That's what it's referring to. Jesus has forever captured the devil and principalities and powers. And then it says he went from the lowest earthly regions and he ascended to give gifts. This is so important. After defeating the enemy, he then ascended. This is all while Jesus' body is in the grave. He ascends to heaven. He goes to receive him for himself a kingdom, we read. Okay, and he gets gifts. And then he rises from the dead because now he has authority. He's defeated death. He's defeated hell. He's taken captive. He's captured the captives. Mm. He's captured by military force, the enemy. By the way, Christmas story, angels appear to shepherds. Glory to God, peace on earth, goodwill towards men. I am sick of hearing that as all this lovey-dovey, nice, angelic. Friends, that was a military invasion. I'm getting bold here. I can mm -hmm. feel it. That's a military invasion. God is sending his hosts an army saying the king has arrived. He's now born. And now I am going to make peace between you and me. He's, I, this Jesus is going to take out the middle space of those principalities and powers. They're going to be taken out. And, you know, those shepherds were scared. It wasn't, oh, isn't this lovely angel wings? Mm -hmm. Those shepherds were scared, man. That was a military invasion. And it happened at his birth and it happened at his death. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful? Mm -hmm. Boy, if we start believing this, mm -hmm. if we started believing this, we wouldn't fear as much. Anyway, I'm coming to that fear thing in a minute. So he ascends and he gets gifts because now he's got the authority. And he rises from the dead. So he now has authority to beat death. Because he won the battle of the grave. Mm. You know, we talk about the battle of the Somme and mm. the battle of Gallipoli, you know, the battle of Culloden. Well, this is the battle of the grave, and Christ mm. won it. Mm. And then in Acts 1, the disciples say, Hey, Jesus, you've risen from the dead. When are you going to knock off Nero and Herod and the Romans? And Jesus said, Boys, don't worry about that. Mm. Don't worry about Rome. Mm. Don't plant a church. Don't do anything. 
Don't do any evangelism for another 50 days. Because then I'm going to pour out my Holy Spirit. And this is preacher's license now. And you are going to receive the gifts that I've taken in the grave. You're going to receive the gifts that I got. And I'm going to pour it out on the church. In, in not many days hence, to use the King James. Yeah. Okay. So what, what were you telling me in the car today about the darkness, Carol? What, what was your words? How did you say it? I said like, Tartarus, that's like the place where there's literally no light at all. Mm. Yes. It's like, there's not one speck of light mm. in there. And Jesus goes from that place to the place where it, in the heavens, there's, it says that there's no darkness at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's gone from completely one extreme, there's not a skerrick of light, to now we can live in that place where it's fully light with no darkness at all. Mm. 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 Do you want to keep preaching? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the middle space taken out. All the grey areas taken out. Isn't that wonderful? He conquered darkness. In him is life, and his life is the light of men. Wow. Amen. And... Um, I like to now read, uh, uh, I'll just read this in Psalm 24. I love what David prophesies. He says in Psalm 24, Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Mm. When's that? That's in the grave. Mm. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head. Then he repeats it. Who is this King of glory, the Lord mighty in battle? Who's this King of glory? Not Baal, not Dagon, the Philistine God, right. not the Canaanite gods, not, not all these sea monsters that you read about. None of them. They're not the King of glory. Jesus is the King of glory. Mm. Come on, heaven, receive him in. Mm. He's one. He's strong and mighty in battle. Wow. Mm. Uh, okay.